For Christmas, my wife got me a handful of these ESP8266s and the Node MCU variant. And these things are amazing. My little brother loves LEDs, so I learned the FastLED library recently and made a little FastLED web server remote controls, you know, uh, setup using um, the ESP8266. I got it all here in this box. <laughs> So there's a power supply in there, and then, you, so I can plug it in, and then this is speaker cable, probably can find this at the thrift store, like, I totally recommend just getting some speaker cable, it's perfect for um, LED uh, type things, it's good for, I think, 10 amps, so that's perfect for this type of stuff, because 12 volt um, LED lights, and that, yeah, they don't, it's perfect. So I got two of those cables, one for the data, for um, the controlling, via the and one for the power to the LED strip. So you can see here, it is doing stuff. I have it set up doing a flow. That's why I call it just the flow animation. I don't know, it's just fading between the colors and then cycling around, you know, doing a cool thing. Um, I'm gonna unplug it here and I'm gonna, when it first boots up, I will demonstrate what happens when it first boots up. We'll go from there. When it first boots up, it gives you its host ID. So if you know your local network, um, mine is, I know my IP range for local network, so I only need the host ID, which is the last section of the IP address. So I can see I have, um, there's 50 addressable sections on this set, on the, on these, um, on this LED strip. So three LEDs per section. So that's three, so that's one, four, four. So I know that the host address for my server is 10.42.0144. So it delivers a web page that allows you to control um, what FastLED's doing and control your LEDs. And it's kind of a bare bones little server um, that is, can be expandable, but I think it's um, pretty well thought out how it works. So um, without further ado, just kind of show it how it's working. It's all based off of basically what the controller I have set up currently is it allows you to control and create a CRGB palette 16 fast sled palette. So that gives you 256 colors. Um, and how it works is essentially, I'll demonstrate here. I'm going to create a palette. And so I have colors from, um, so I have four colors currently. And I can add my colors. And how it works is, is here, they're going to have an anchor point. And the anchor point is where it's going to be, let's start off with red. So we'll set red there. And so at zero, index zero, it's going to be red. And then at index 85, it's going to be blue. And yellow, then after that at 170. And then green, sure. So we made some colors. And we'll make it red again so it fades back. So basically that means is, look up how fast that palette works. It's pretty awesome. But it's just going to, I have it set to do a linear gradient between red and blue or a linear gradient across the whole palette. So basically between uh, um, 0 and 63 is going to be all the colors between red, red being at 0, and blue at 63. It's going to make a nice gradient between them. And so you can adjust your gradient step to fit more colors onto the, onto the palette. So you can fit all your colors into your 50 LEDs. Spread them out nice and evenly. You just do the math in your mind. So, 
Um, and that's how that works. And the reason why I have all those fun little settings is because you can do uh, this right here. And the only animation I got is flow. And I called it flow. And essentially what it does is it goes, it increments through the palette. So you can look at how that works, but it's kind of a common thing uh, with with LEDs, right? And let's bring it down so it's smoother. So I'm going to change my, you see my gradient steps really fast, so I'm going to go through those colors faster in my interval. My interval is currently 42 milliseconds, so it's animating really fast. So I'm going to change my ingrid, change it down to one color. So I get, I'm cycling through all 256 colors, not just, um, you know, like 10 of the colors. And then I also have here number of LEDs per palette color is one. So, but if I change that though to like 50, that means all 50 colors just get one color. So like the whole strip is fading at the same time in between each color. So I kind of get that slow fade effect that's kind of popular, right? With RGB, you just kind of fade through. And so I guess next I'll explain the gist of how I get this web page to be served by the ESP8266 and that is done with the SPIF file system. So there's a cool, um, well essentially when I or we make a request just to the base address of the server, it's going to send back the index.html and that index.html is being served or grabbed via spiffs and spiffs is a cool tool that essentially um, I don't know, but simply emulates a file system on the ESP8266 and so in your in your Arduino project you're gonna have your Arduino project folder your Arduino code and then a data folder and anything in the data folder is gonna get copied over to the spiff file system on the on the on the little device and you can access it just by the same file name as in the data folder so it's very handy and you just use the tool here um, under tools you have to install it but all the links are in the github repo and yeah you install that and then you can, whenever you click this button, anything in the data folder gets put on the system. So very handy. That's how that works. And then this index.html essentially is served via, I have a node project here. Um, don't worry if you don't know about node, except for I guess you kind of need to, but I have um, my a knockout script. So I have a knockout script. Knockout.js is great for little tooling like this. It's really cool. Um, and that knockout JS then um, essentially I have a minify HTML script. So I have a script that I run that takes the knockout, places it in the HTML, and then minifies it all. And then just puts that minified HTML, which looks like it's all minified, right? And then throws that, it puts that right here, just automatically for me. Um, and then so then I can click the button and that's how the HTML gets on the machine. Really cool. That is the gist of the project. Um, yeah, let me click set, set the gradient there and enjoy the flow. Oh, gotta adjust the speed. There you go. We'll make it a little faster. Make it really fast. Um, hope you guys enjoy and comment if you have questions. I always willing to help out. I love these types of projects. It's really cool to see how far the Arduino community has come. It's like in incredible how much stuff you can do with just you know one of these things because people have so many amazing libraries for it. Like what? I was like, I didn't know I could do just JSON with it. I can do asynchronous kind of, you know, web server structure. As you can see, like when I'm making commands and calls with this thing, uh, nothing really, you know, there's no stutter really. 
it just keeps chugging along. So, cool stuff. Thanks for watching.